The end of the world can come in many forms, and while we have protocols in place for some of the disasters that could potentially wipe us out here on Earth, what about the threats from above? Well, that's where NASA comes into play. Today we're talking about some of the biggest threats from up in the stars, and how NASA is working to protect us against them. It's mathematically very likely that there is extraterrestrial life somewhere out there. It's cool to think about aliens finally making contact with Earth, but also kind of unsettling, depending how things go. So how would we respond? Do we have protocols in place? Well, apparently we actually do. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, or SETI, has had a protocol in place since 1989, outlining the plan of action if a message from extraterrestrial life is received. The thing is, it's kind of vague. Basically, it outlines sharing the message with the broader scientific community, which is obvious, and once confirming that this hypothetical message is from alien life, to then contact the United Nations uh, for them to get involved which is also obvious. But what beyond that? Well, at this point, we don't really know. I, I guess we just have to hope they don't wish us any harm and we be able to make peaceful contact. And of course, this is all assuming aliens haven't already had contact with us and it's all just being kept hush-hush. Now, aside from sentient life, we also have the threat of inanimate objects to worry about as well, primarily asteroids. Now, a massive asteroid hurtling into Earth would be disastrous. We don't want to go out like those loser dinosaurs. So luckily, NASA does have ways of battling these gigantic space rocks. In an interview with astronomer Dr. Kelly Fast, who works at NASA, specializing in planetary defense, which has to be the most futuristic sounding career path ever, she discussed what plans are in place to protect Earth from asteroids. First of all, NASA always has its eye on space, keeping track of any potential asteroid that may be hurtling our way. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office is is able to calculate orbits with pinpoint accuracy. So if they were to spot an asteroid that posed a real threat to Earth, they'd try using the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, to send an unmanned craft out to deflect the asteroid away from Earth. DART's already been used once in 2021 to deflect a small asteroid away from the planet. There's also the International Asteroid Warning Network. Now, this is less of a plan on how to destroy or deflect an asteroid and more about warning people of the danger. Scientists from the International Asteroid Warning Network, or IAWN, would first check the data to confirm there's a real threat. Once there's an agreement on the danger, NASA would be alerted. If the threat is confirmed, NASA would then send an alert to the White House. The government would then release a statement to the public informing them about the potential asteroid impact. If the threat is global, IAWN would notify the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. The government would issue a public statement to let people know about the situation and provide guidance on what to do next. As for what that would be, I can't imagine there'd be much we could do if it got to this stage. I mean, like, get to work digging on our underground bunkers, I guess? I mean, what can you do? It's an asteroid. If NASA spots the asteroid just a few months before it's set to hit, it might be too late to take action. So the goal is to detect these objects well in advance. With enough lead time, there should be no need for last minute urgent public alerts like this. Next on the list, we have the threat of gamma ray bursts. So these are intense bursts of gamma ray radiation from out in space. A gamma ray burst is an incredibly energetic explosion that happens in space, releasing a burst of extremely high energy gamma rays, almost like a super intense flash of light, but way more powerful than anything we typically encounter. These bursts can be so intense that for a brief moment they can outshine an entire galaxy. In theory, a super large burst could be catastrophic to Earth, messing up our atmosphere, breaking down the protective ozone layer, exposing us to harmful radiation, and affecting the climate. So what's in place to protect Earth if one of these things gets too close. Well, to be honest, there is unfortunately no official protocol in place yet, but NASA does monitor space for gamma ray bursts on a regular basis and is always studying their origins and looking at the potential impact they could have on Earth's atmosphere. Fortunately, gamma ray bursts are typically too far away from Earth to cause harm, so the more they can study and learn about them, the closer they'll get to forming solutions on how to protect against them. And fortunately, the chances of something like this happening are very low. 
A bit similar to gamma ray bursts are solar flares. The sun, it's a lovely thing. Without it, we wouldn't be around at all. But the sun is also incredibly intense. A solar flare is not just the iconic technique from Dragon Ball. There are sudden intense bursts of energy on the sun's surface, like a powerful explosion that releases a large amount of light, heat, and charged particles into space. These bursts of energy impact the space around the sun, and if large enough, even Earth. Particularly intense solar flares could disrupt Earth's electromagnetic field. This would affect power grids, satellites, and communication systems. Now, this may not immediately destroy us like a massive asteroid impact, but if our power grids went down, yeah, we'd be in trouble. So how can something like this be prevented? Well, NASA constantly watches the sun, so if it does act up, they aim to give us a heads up a well in advance. Solar flares can mess with our technology, uh, so NASA will try to shield satellites and other important tech to minimize any damage. Massive solar flares can also mess with power grids. NASA would work with power companies to take precautions and minimize any impact on electricity. So aliens, bursts of radiation, asteroids, those are all scary and would be uh, very in-your-face kinds of threats. But what about something more insidious? As we all know, viruses and bacteria have come close to wiping us out before. And that's just stuff we have here at home. Uh, with how vast and mysterious space is, it's not hard to imagine some sort of hazardous material accidentally being brought to Earth by astronauts, spreading through the population, and eradicating us for good. Well, when astronauts travel to space, NASA takes precautions to make sure they don't bring back any harmful bacteria or other tiny organisms that could cause trouble here on Earth. Before astronauts return, they go through a carefully planned process to clean clean themselves and their stuff, their spacesuits, equipment, and even the spacecraft get a thorough cleaning to keep any potential space germs in check. Once back on Earth, astronauts are checked to ensure they haven't picked up any unwanted hitchhikers during their mission, preventing any potential space bugs from causing problems in our environment. So far we've looked at plans to help prevent the Earth from being destroyed, but what if the destruction of Earth was unavoidable? Is there a plan in place for a situation where the end of our world is just imminent? Well, the only real possibility, other than closing our eyes and praying, would be leaving Earth, moving out into space and colonizing other planets. NASA is always working on technology to one day get us further and further out into space in the shortest amount of time possible. Not just to explore, but in preparation for a dark outcome just like this. The planets we'd most likely be able to inhabit would be Mars, which would suck. Nothing about that place looks appealing. And Venus. But we could even set up colonies on the moon. It's easy to think of the moon as being just this small little ball out in space, but it's actually nearly five times the surface area of mainland USA. Like, Sure, we wouldn't fit anywhere near the entire population of Earth up there, but we could fit about five times the population of the United States. About one and a half billion, give or take. If there's one thing us humans do best, it's produce mass amounts of waste. So once we do start venturing into space more often, waste is gonna start becoming another problem that needs to be dealt with. You already have space debris floating around and only a handful of humans have ever been up there. We got busted satellites, dead animals, and rockets from failed missions floating about. These things don't pose a huge threat right now, at least not to the entire planet. They could smash into ships or the International Space Station and cause some problems though. But in the more time we start spending in space, the more space trash we're gonna have. And the last thing we'd want is tons of large space debris crashing into space stations and ships, causing a domino effect of space accidents, leading to the deaths of many. Well, at this point, NASA keeps track of all the bits and pieces floating around in space using fancy radars and telescopes. If it looks like any of these space leftovers might bump into something important, like a satellite or a spaceship, NASA figures out a way to move things around so that there's no collision. They also work with other countries and space agencies to share info and make sure everyone is on the same page about where all the space clutter is. But they're gonna have to come up with ways of disposing of large space debris as it becomes more of an issue. Next on the list, we have the world-ending threat of a rogue black hole passing through our solar system and devouring everything in its path. 
Black holes are just frightening, the definition of a force of nature, so powerful that not even light itself can escape their grasp once it reaches the event horizon. So it'd be pretty devastating if a rogue black hole rolled up, luckily very unlikely though. All the black holes we can currently observe are very, very far away from us, uh, way too far to worry about. But what plan does NASA have in place to deal with potentially threatening rogue black hole? Well, they always have their eyes on the stars so they'd know if one was close, and they'd be able to warn the public. Uh, but aside from that, there's nothing much we could do with the technology we have currently. The protocol would be wait, hope for the best, and try not to panic. Not the most comforting answer, but right now, that's really all they got. Hopefully, with more research though, they can learn more about black holes, and with a better understanding, work on ways to avoid or deal with them in the future. But again, black holes are the least of our worries at this point. Finally, it's important to remember that NASA also keeps a watchful eye over Earth using satellites. NASA uses satellites and other tools to keep a close eye on the planet. One of its crucial roles is to monitor and respond to natural disasters. Uh, for hurricanes, NASA satellites capture detailed images and measurements, helping predict their paths and their intensity. Satellites can also track spread of wildfires and monitor their intensity. NASA helps emergency responders and scientists get a clearer picture of what's happening during disasters like these. So even when things get bad right here on Earth, NASA is there to help out with that as well. And with all that said, I've been your host James. I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.